Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Midday Live from our news hub here at Adesawe in Kandakra. My name is Park Yasari. Coming up in the bulletin. National Democratic Congress Chairman Ofosu Ampofu to meet police CID over kidnapping investigations. Also in the bulletin, four halls in the University of Ghana could be privatized as a result of over 40 million city judgment debt. And elsewhere on the international front, votes have been counted in South Africa's general election with President Cyril Ramaphosa seeking re-election. We've got the very latest details about this and many more stories coming up in the next 60 minutes. Be reminded that we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with your views, comments and suggestions on any of our top headline stories this hour. Do also visit our social media page. It's TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. We'll begin with Paul kidnapping and fire outbreaks in various parts of the country. A letter signed by the CID Director General, COP Mami Ya Tiwa Adodankwa, asked him to, to appear on Thursday, May 9 at 2 p.m. Well, according to the police CID, intelligence gathered suggests that some of the kidnappings and fire outbreaks are being orchestrated by various unidentified groups, persons and individuals. The CID added that some persons picked up for interrogation and investigation have mentioned the name of the NDC national chairman, Samuel Ufosu Ampofu, as part of a grand scheme designed to cause fear and panic in the country. Right, so staying a while longer on happenings within the uh, National Democratic Congress and the NDC chairman is expected at the CID headquarters in a few hours. My colleague Kamala Kluche has been gauging the atmosphere there and has come through with this report. So that express letter written uh, by the CID boss, Mami Atiwa Adudankwatu, the national chairman of the NDC Samuel of Swampofo, that they should report to the CID headquarters today, the 9th of May, for uh, some interrogation into the alleged uh, kidnappings and then fire outbreaks in the country. We do pick up intelligence also from our sources at the CID headquarters that uh, some of the people they have picked up in connection with the kidnappings and the fire outbreaks to that infamous uh, leak tape by the chairman of the NDC, Samuel of Oswampofo. But we also do understand uh, from lawyers of the national chairman of the NDC that their chairman will not be honoring that investigation or will not be honoring that invitation. We do also understand from our sources at the CID headquarters that it will be in the interest of the national chairman to show up at the CID headquarters for investigations into the matter in its own interest, however. But activities at the CID headquarters, you can see normal activities, no sign of uh, supporters of the chairman of the NDC here, though normally they do come in their numbers to show their support, but we do not see any activity of that yet. We also do pick intelligence from the CID that they have beefed up uh, security measures within the CID headquarters and around to prevent some of these people who come to show their support uh, whenever suspects are arraigned before the CID. It remains unclear, however, whether or not the chairman of the NDC will show up here at the CID headquarters. Komla Kluchem, TV3 News, CID headquarters, Accra. All right, so that was my colleague Komla Kluche reporting live from the police headquarters in Accra. He joins me in the studio. Uh, Komla, thank you very much for your time. So we know that the NDC national chairman is expected to uh, appear before the CID at 2 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, what more do we know? Okay, uh, uh, his lawyers have been granting interviews all over uh, the media since yesterday, l late evening, when that letter popped up on social media. One, we have confirmation on uh, the details of the letter he's supposed to meet the cid this afternoon at 2 p.m 
uh, what we do also know is that as his lawyers have been speaking, they have been saying that he is not going to uh, go to the CID headquarters to uh, go and assist in, in, in these investigations as to what the reasons are. I mean, it, 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 they have not explained, but they just right. said that they are not going to. But mind you, the case he has in court, uh, at the last meeting uh, of, of the court, uh the state investigators or the prosecution had uh given a forensic report of the leak tape and uh, cds and every other thing that uh has to do with the leak tape to the court they have submitted those things as evidences to the court it is unclear however if that is linked to read though. but because our in court. yes mm -hmm. but our sources are the cid mm -hmm. headquarters uh telling us that there is only one thing he's got to do that is to come and clear his name right just hold on for me Kamala Kluche. Uh, we're picking up information that the legal team of the national democratic congress has just fin me finished a meeting and uh Ibrahim Maliba uh, is a member of the ndc legal team he joins us live on the phone line sir uh, we understand that you have uh, changed your earlier position which was not to uh, attend before the, the the invitation of the cid why why have you taken this new stance uh, good afternoon to your viewers we have just concluded a meeting. We shall be heading towards the police headquarters in about some 30 minutes time. So by one o'clock we'll be there. I cannot confirm whether our chairman will be with us, but the legal team will be there. And then at two o'clock, the council of elders of the party would also hold a press conference on this same subject matter. This is what I can tell you. That's fair. Uh, you had earlier uh, indicated quite strongly that you were not going to appear before the CID. Uh, what has changed? I have not said Ofusuan Pofo is appearing. I'm saying that we as lawyers will be at the police headquarters. On what basis are you attending the uh, police headquarters invitation? Because we are lawyers of, uh, of Osama Pafo, and our clients have been invited. And so we have been sufficiently instructed by our counsel. And as a result of that, we are going to the police headquarters at 1. So the legal team is going to the police headquarters at 1. Uh, subsequent to that, the uh, National uh, Council is holding a press conference. Aren't you making a mountain out of a molehill? This is just an invitation to your chairman. There's, there's really nothing to it. That is what you see, but we see it as uh, a form of harassment on our chairman. Don't forget our chairman is already in court. We have cooperated with the police all this while. We think that it is becoming too much. We think that um, the police is beginning to think uh, we are timid. And so the, with any flimsy, flimsy allegation, then they were invited. The question I want to ask the police is, that information they picked, to mention a person's name you begin inviting people you mean it's I becoming you mean it's becoming too much to uh, follow due process this is a democracy it's becoming too much of what a, do we have the luxury of an alternative then the police have other options they can do what they want to do but i am saying that at one o'clock we will be at the police headquarters we asking the lawyers I am unaware of, uh, I cannot confirm whether the chairman will be with us or not, but I know at 1.30, at 1 o'clock, we'll be at the police headquarters. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ibrahim Amaliba is a member of the NDC legal team joining us on the phone line. And he, uh, they have said that they are going to attend to the invitation of the police CID. They cannot, however, confirm if Mr. Officer Ampofu will be with them. Later on at, uh, at 2, also, the, uh, the, the council, the, the, the council of elders, would hold a press conference on this matter. Kamala, quickly, let's wrap up on mm. this. So, uh, just like I was saying, um, the sources we have at the CID headquarters have just been saying that simply his invitation is for him to just come and uh, clear his name 
uh, with respect to the intel that the CID has picked up with regards to uh, the kidnappings and then the fire outbreaks, it's been linked this suspect who are, have, uh, the CID has gotten, they are linking it to him. So uh, they are just inviting him to simply come and clear his name. Mm. His name has been mentioned mm. by these individuals. Mm. So he should come and let's say whether or not he's involved or not. Mm. It's just as simple as they say it. Mm. All right, yeah. thank you very much, Kamala. Kluche is a man on the beat uh, following up on this developing story. Uh, we're going to stay a while longer on this story because um, we've got also got a, a security analyst, Adam Bona. He's also been monitoring uh, happenings uh, within the Please following due process, but as politicians, they cannot help but to read political persecution in this matter. What do you say? Yes, good afternoon. Yes, exactly, rightly so. Uh, it's it's almost sometimes as if uh, we are all not equal before the law. For me, I think the law is no respecter of person. It doesn't matter your status in society. If uh, the police invites you. I think respectfully, you have to show yourself or you've got to, you know, uh, attend to the police. Let them know uh, you, I mean, you, have, you haven't committed any crime. In any case, I, I think that uh, per the invitation is, is to come and either confirm whether what uh, this, you know, people they've arrested, uh, what they are saying is true or it's not true. He, you know, gave an alibi that I don't, depending on, uh, what he knows about, that saying I won't go could probably lend credence to the fact that he might actually have a hand in, in it. And so for me, I think that it's for his own good that he uh, goes to the police to clear himself. It's very important. Right. Of course, they've altered that earlier uh, position. They have agreed to uh, attend before the invitation of the CID. But, Mr. Bonat, we know that, you know, in times past, incumbents have used the security services to um, unnecessarily harass the opponent. It will be difficult today. Uh, I wouldn't be able to confirm. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the reality on the ground is that we have seen surge in kidnappings. We have seen surge in, uh, you know, uh, buildings going up in flames. But some of the, I mean, surge in, I mean, buildings going up in flames started long ago. And so one cannot say it started today. But we've seen surge in you know, uh, some kidnapping activities. That is not to say the NDC party chairman has a hand in it, but it's instrumental to also point to the fact that if his name has been mentioned, it would be good, he should go. Uh, why would he be involved? But if he's involved, I think the police are performing their uh, duties, so he should see to them. And I hope that the NDC, maybe for the first time, they should show leadership, not mass up, go there with, you know, teaming supporters, I don't believe that they will do that. So that, uh, the place will be will be more quieter. He goes in there as quickly as he went in there. He will leave probably. You know, they ask him a few questions and he's gone. Instead of the usual uh, drumming and dancing and you know surrounding the place, it doesn't make it better. Because if it's me, I don't think anybody is going to follow me to the CID headquarters. If it is you, and so we should all be seen to be equal before the law. For me, less I think we should allow rule of law to reign in this country, devoid of any political harassment, devoid of whatever. And I want to believe that the CID have invited him uh, for a simple reason that somebody has mentioned his name. So he should just go and clear his name. You know, simplicity, finish. And you don't think that this is uh, going to further, uh, you know, worsen the political climate? This is a man who's already standing trial in court for, for alleged comments he may have made. Oh, I'm happy you said he's standing trial in court. In, in, that is not to say it is good for people to stand trial. I think that is the beauty of democracy. The fact that you are before court uh, does not necessarily mean you are guilty of an offense that you are being prosecuted for. He's not, I don't think he's been persecuted. He's been prosecuted. And so he just, I believe he has, you know, adequate lawyers, lawyers who know what they are doing. And they'll defend him. And if he's free, he's always generated. He goes home free. But for me, I think that the rule of law must always reign. And so as for worsening the political climate, the political climate is already, you know, toxic. It's already 
uh, politicized. And mm. so as far as I'm concerned, there's so much tension. And so for me, what the politicians must do is to always allow cool heads to reign when they are invited for some of these things. They should show themselves. And the police, you know, cautioning the police that they should make sure they are balanced. Because I did hear uh, Ousu Benpa make a comment about the missing girls, and I don't think he's been invited. I would want that. And Ousu Benpa is somebody who relates to the president of the republic very well. And so when these things sometimes go, uh, you know, without anybody calling some of these people in, then you begin to hear about, oh, it is politics, it's politics. But we should all be seen to be equal before the law, if you ask me from where I say. Thanks very much uh, for joining us. Adam Bona is a security analyst helping out with some analysis on this latest uh, story. Uh, still on politics, the Opposition National Democratic Congress um, um, is in the news again, and they have accused government of intimidating journalists who hold government officials accountable. Deputy at a news conference, described the attack as unwarranted, assuring journalists of the party support. Here's a report by my colleague, Selom Amenya. The NDC was reacting to reports that multimedia journalist Manasi Azuri Awene had fled the country to seek refuge in South Africa after his documentary on the alleged militia at the seat of government. Manasse is reported to have been threatened, leading to his departure from the country. And uh, we assure you of our continuous unflinching solidarity, especially in this difficult time of the heinous murder of your colleague, Ahmed Swale, and the unwarranted attacks and threats on the life of Edward Adeti of Star FM and Manasse Azure of the multimedia group by some state and political functionaries. We assure you of our solidarity. Meanwhile, government has dismissed claims the current environment is not safe for journalists. Information Minister Kojo Ponkruma maintained the safety of journalists is a topmost priority for government. In the case of, um, I think, one gentleman, for example, we gave him, gave him the opportunity to choose police officer that he was comfortable with to provide him the necessary security. Um, in another instance, for example, the organization primarily got involved and then we have had conversations with the police CID to uh, support at the back end. So generally the atmosphere continues to be conducive. I don't think it's helpful for we ourselves who are practicing in this safe, conducive environment to be creating the impression on the global scene um, as though there's chaos. He hinted of plans to collaborate with international organizations to ensure journalists feel safer and secured while executing their duties. It is a, a United Nations uh, sponsored mechanism. The African Union Commission is keen on supporting it. And the state of Ghana is also keen on being perhaps one of the first African countries to put it in place so that we can add to the many layers uh, of uh, support that we provide. Meanwhile, the National Democratic Congress chairman for the Dafiama Busi Isa constituency, Mr. Pualabong Bailela Rakat, a.k.a. Chairman Water, has been shot dead by an unidentified gang. The incident occurred Monday night at Sagu on the Watumu Road in the Upper West Region. Now, according to close associates, the deceased was returning from a funeral when the sad incident happened. Abdul Gaffa is our correspondent there and joins us live on the phone lines. Abdul, so what has been the reaction by the police? Hello, Abdul Gaffa, if you can hear me, I was asking what the reaction of the police has been and if any suspects have been arrested so far. Yes, uh, uh, this morning uh, we... I actually went to the police headquarters here in Wa and uh, I inquired with the police inspector, Adrian Henry Barton, who is the police PRO for the Upper West Regional Police Headquarters. Uh, what he said is that they are still yet to apprehend or arrest anybody in connection with the killing of uh, Mr. Richard. Uh, what he said is that uh, for now, the public. Uh, they are waiting and trying to collaborate with the public uh, to who are willing to volunteer any information uh, to the killing of this particular um, uh, chairman of the uh, National Democratic Congress for the 
that you know, the is that different. All right, thank you very much, Abdul Ghaffar. Please stay there and give us more details as and when they come. Uh, Abdul Ghaffar is our correspondent uh, in the Upper West Region. Away from there, let's take a quick drive to the University of Ghana, where President of the uh, Student Representative Council, Sylvester Owusu Marco, is opposing to a possible privatization of some four halls in the university. This is as a result of management's failure to repay a 43 million CD loan facility contracted in 2008 for the construction of the halls. Uh, my colleague Salom Amenya is there and joins us live. Hello, Salom. Kwapon Hall, Hila Liman, Elizabeth uh, Francis C, and also uh, Zin Nelson. I've held a press conference together with the LSAC, uh, actually registering their displeasure, but some happenings in here. What is happening is that um, the management of the school went for a loan uh, some years back, and this loan of uh, 43 million Ghana CD has actually grown to about 528 million CDs. That was the money they used in constructing these halls. And uh, early this year, the court actually gave a ruling that the school management uh, should actually go ahead and pay these monies to uh, the banks involved. What is happening now is that there have been some meetings here and there, and then the banks have given the school um, some leeway of a sort. I have here Sylvester Mwako, who happens to be the LCRC president. So what, what, what are the issues that you are learning today? All right, thank you very much. So the issues we've been talking about is um, there's been a judgment that, um, that has been um, levied against the school and all of its assets. And you know, the interesting thing is that the collateral for the diaspora horse is not just this four horse, but it includes some other horse and some other annexes. And what we are saying is that our simple question has been that yes, management we believe have not done much prudence as far as servicing the loan is concerned. But um, with a word of statement by former president, His Excellency John Evans, Fifi Mills, that we're going to step in and help service the loan because as I went, the halls were supposed to accommodate students. Students started some form of agitation that the fees were high and all. And so there was that um, government intervention. At this point, we've been asked to pay a good faith deposit of 50 million Ghana CD to start off the 50% waiver on the 538 million CDs. And the position of the University of Ghana is they do not have the money. All right, what so, so, so come, SRC, what is happening is that come, come, come the first of May. Government. No. Come 31st of May, uh, the, the period that they've actually given the school is going to expire. Between now and 31st of May, what are you seeking to do? So what we are saying is that government should come in and intervene. We are giving a one-week ultimatum. If we are calling for a roundtable discussion with university management and government, we are calling on the Ministry of Education, the MP of this constitu constituency, Ayawaso West Wogon, and His Excellency the President, Nana Dodan Kufuadu, so that we step in and resolve the issues. I have 30 days in office to leave, but I believe that the students that we told we are going to serve will stay in the University of Ghana forever. People are standing in the sun and saying we won't pay, and so we will be bold to defend this just cause forever and ever. Let's all come on board, let's sit together, and let's make it happen. Like we've done in the University of Ghana, we have demonstrated that we can make our voices heard without breaking cars and breaking anything. So we are calling on all alumni, we are calling on UTAG, we are calling on TEWU, we are calling on TESCON, we are calling on TE, we are calling on CPP, we are calling on KNUST, we are calling on USAG, we are calling on NUCS to join in as we stand in for yeah, students. And you're saying that if you don't get the round table discussion, you're going to embark on some actions? If you don't get a round table discussion, I believe that we would have then exhausted all due diligence. It is not in our place to just march on the street and make University of Ghana management unpopular or the government unpopular, not at all. I think we can talk about some good educational policies like free SHS, which is going on. But we believe that we in the University of Ghana need to be attended to. It will interest you to know that in the next three years, we have a lot more of our SHS colleagues coming in here. So if we are already going to have issues with accommodation, then we can say that, yes, the educational system might be at a threat. So it's a just cause, and we are calling for a roundtable discussion with investing management and the government of the Republic of Ghana, and the timeline is one week. Thank All you. right, thank you very much. So they, they've, they've given a one-week ultimatum that if they don't get the roundtable discussion, they are going to match to the registry as well as the Flagstaff House. Selom Amenya from the University of Ghana campus for TV3 News. Over to you, Parkway
Thank you very much, Salma Menya from the University of Ghana, bringing us up to speed on latest happenings there. This is one of our big stories for the day. The University of Ghana, four halls at the university stand to be privatized as a result of a loan gone bad. The university had contracted a loan of up to 43 million Ghana cities, and these four halls were used as collateral. We're told that over a period of time, the university has been unable to uh, pay these loans, and the four halls uh, risk privatization and the students are extremely angry about this latest development. They want the uh, university authorities to step in and intervene. They want the government to step in and intervene as well. We'll follow up on this story and I'm sure we'll bring you the very latest uh, in our subsequent bulletins. You're watching Media Life here on TV3. A reminder, we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with your views, comments and suggestions. If you feel very strongly about any of our top stories this hour, be the NDC uh, call for the NDC chairman to appear before the CID or the privatization of four halls the University of Ghana, feel free to send us your views and suggestions. Let's now go for our MTN video report. This is Committee 20, Lashibi Tema. This is supposed to be a storm drain. But there are so many trees and grasses and weeds growing in that when it rains, it's not able to flow very well. And so there's usually flooding here. And this is one of the reasons there are been And so it poses a great danger when it rains. Any heavy rain brings about floods here. This thing has to be checked. I'm citizen reporter Eric Kwashi from Tema. All right, so watch and made it live here on TV3. Still ahead, we've got the very latest in business news. We've got sports and international news all coming up. Hello, Alva. Welcome to the business news segment on Media Life here on TV3. Now, the Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry, Ahum Kalinse, has challenged the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, GEPA, to focus on scaling up the country's exports. At an event in Accra to launch GEPA's 50th anniversary celebrations, he noted that the com competence of the authority will continue to be measured by the country's export profile. Ghana Export Promotion Authority, GEPA, was established to develop and promote Ghana's exports after the realization that traditional exports alone would not sustain the economy. The authority therefore focused on diversifying the country's export base. Focus on priority areas of export, which will help us achieve our set target of 5.3 billion in 2021. To achieve our mandate ahead of us, we have laid out a number of strategic initiatives to aggressively market our very well-made Ghana goods and services. GEPA acquired its authority status in 2011 in accordance with Ghana's Revised Laws Act 1998. To ensure that the next 50 years of GEPA's life is a greater impact than the previous 50 years of GEPA's life. I didn't say pineapple, I said fruit juices. Chocolate, I didn't say cocoa, I said chocolate. Aluminium in terms of cans, not alumni. Deputy Minister of Trade Ahum Kalinse said the true work of GEPA is in its impact on the economy and its role in the country's industrial transformation. He urged the authority to focus on developing the profiles of exporters and to add value to the country's export profile. That's all for the business news segments here on Media Live. For more business news stories, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. Now, away from business, Ghana has lost um, a whopping sum of 21 million CDs this year from two major donors intending to support health initiatives to end HIV, tuberculosis and malaria. Now, this was due to government's inability to meet its co-financing agreements with the donors, which are the Global Fund and the United States President Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief. 
uh, PEPFA abrogated its memorandum of understanding with the government to a tune of $19.5 million, while the Global Fund made a recovery of $1.6 million from its 2018 to 2020 country envelope for Ghana. The country had since 2002 received a cumulative disbursement of $804 million from the Global Fund with inadequate uh, domestic resources for health interventions. Right, so it's a pretty much, uh, you know, worrying development, and we, we need to understand why this has occurred and what the way forward is. I've been joined this year by Madame Cecilia Seno, who is president of the Estate Non-Actors Ghana and also executive director of the Hope for Future uh, Generations, a group championing the fight against HIV AIDS. Thank you very much, Mum, for your time. I know you're quite worried about this latest development. How did we get to this point? Thank you very much. I, it's, it's rather unfortunate that... Uh, our co-financing uh, targets have not been met. Our systems are not developed to effectively develop to address these issues. And donors cannot wait for you because there are several countries that are waiting to achieve their targets. And achieving the 1990 target, which is set globally for all of us for HIV, is a big issue. Civil so society is worried. We are worried because we, our domestic resources for health is woefully inadequate. Our health outcomes has not actually been achieved. And yet, resources that don't us because of not balancing the co funding that we're supposed to achieve. So mm. we are worried. Non state mm. actors is very worried. Mm. The patients are worried. Everybody is worried. Mm. And what will be the consequences on Ghana's efforts towards reaching HIV epidemic control levels by 2030? I think currently our HIV prevalence is rising. I mean, compared to other countries, we are quite slow. But even one HIV positive is an issue. So that means that if we don't have adequate resources for HIV, we will continue, we will continue having rise in uh, the prevalence of the disease because we are currently 1.6 percent you know we went as low as 1.2 before and hiv prevalence among pregnant women is also quite high and so you need resources to address all these issues apart from resources our attitude, our commitment, and our systems are very important. Mm, uh, Madam Cecilia, so, uh, you, you know, please hold on for me. Let me get on the phone lights now and speak to uh, Chairman Etiahine, who's the Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your time. So why couldn't we meet the commitment um, as stated? Yeah, good afternoon, and thanks for having me. Yes, uh, the, the co-financing of the uh, health program in the country is, I think, known to everyone that uh, the, every donor funding requires government counterpart funding. And for HIV, TB, and malaria, it is the same arrangement. Now, with these two um, funding from Global Fund and PESA, government is supposed to provide funding for procurement of HIV commodities, which include antiretroviral medicines, uh, rapid diagnostic test kits, um, laboratory supplies and other things, condoms uh, also. Actually, uh, with the Global Fund, government was supposed to procure condoms worth 850 eight something thousand dollars. And we had a deadline of meeting that target by, uh, which was um, December 31st, 2018. Government initiated the process of the procure, procurement, but it took a delay. Let me put it that way, that delivery delay. And that is why the uh, deduction was made by Global Fund.
Right, uh, Mr. So Chairman, Mr. Chairman, it's not because government is reneging on its uh, uh, counterpart uh, or co-financing commitment. It's just because of the procurement process, and I think we all know that the procurement law should be adhered to strictly. And in going through that process, uh, there were some delays. Right, Mr. Chairman, I need you to, uh, you know, lower the volume on your television set. It's giving me terrible feedback uh, here. Thank you very much. Uh, so, very finally, what can we do to ensure that we do not miss on such... Is it the That's perfect. That's perfect. So, what's been done to ensure that we do not miss out on such funding opportunities in future? Pardon me, can you say that again, please? I was asking what's been done to ensure we do not miss out on such, we do not miss out on such funding opportunities in future. Yes. The government is currently on track with its co-financing obligations. And so we do not anticipate that this situation will arise in the future. Secondly, um, we have petitioned the Global Fund to return the uh, 1.6 million that was deducted. And we have given cogent reasons why uh, the money should be returned to Ghana. Uh, in the same way, we are talking to the U.S. government to also return uh, the money that is 19.5 million that was taken away. Um, I Currently, the idea at the, uh, on the side of the U.S. government is that they want to see uh, more results. And if we are able to show results within the shortest possible time, we will get the money back, and probably with additional funds. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Itu Ahene is Director General of the Ghana AIDS Commission, also sharing his perspective uh, on this developing story. Uh, quickly, ma'am, just to wrap up, uh, we often hear about the 1990 uh, global targets for HIV. What are these global targets? Okay, 1990, the first 90 is that the 90% of the population should know their HIV status. That means we must be tested and know whether you are positive or negative. And those who are tested and they are positive, should be put on treatment. And those who are put on treatment also should remain on treatment and suppress to have viral suppression. That means that you're, you can be economically fit to do your work, mm -hmm. even though you have the virus in your body. And then so those who are not positive and negative should have access to education and all other things that will prevent them from getting HIV. Because we believe that when people have viral suppression, then they can be strong and you will not even have the, 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 you won't get into A state. And, and that we are, is we are on course to attain this We, we are actually not on course. Mm. I think currently we have a number of people have tested. You need the test kits to do the test at different levels. And I think from what Mr. Tremi said, I think we have problem with the test kits. Right. And right. then those who are tested and they are positive. Currently, uh, we don't have all of them on treatment. So we still have people who have HIV. But we've not been able to put them on treatment yet. So they are walking around. And so the spread continues. And that is where we are very worried. And I believe that a lot of people are worried about that because we right. are not able to give treatment to people. Now I appreciate your time. Uh, Madam Cecilia Seno is a president of the Non-State Actors Ghana and also executive director of Hope for Future Generations, a group championing the fight against HIV AIDS. Are you still watching Midday Life here on TV3? We'll take a short break and return with the very latest in sports news with Yao Ofosulabi. All roads lead to the Independence Square on Saturday, May 11, as Ghana's A-list artists gear up to entertain fans at the VGMA Experience Concert. Oh, yeah. mm. I love that. Shout out to man Gringo. Yes, Gringo, Ringo. Wow. Hey, man, Dingo. In a countdown to music's biggest night, the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards, organizers have decided to treat fans to a marathon of music at the Independence Square. The experience concert is expected to set the tone for the 20th VGMA scheduled for Saturday, May 18 at the Accra International Conference Center. Topmost skanker Stoneboy will be on hand to excite patrons. The SM boss Shatawale will be live in action. And of course, the SAC natives will not be left out. The VGMA's most decorated musician, Sakodie, is expected to spice up the concert with a remarkable performance.
the match talked about experience concert will also feature performances from Kwesiata, Adina, and master performer Samini. to expect a night of pure entertainment and an unforgettable experience. Chatterhouse has promised to ensure the venue is secured enough for patrons. The experience concert is open to all at no cost and will be aired live on TV3. All right, that's all for Media Life here on TV3. Thanks very much for watching. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. My name is Park Siasari. Black and proud.